Good to see you, Maria. Where, and, and, yep. Go ahead. Please. I was just saying that, uh, you know, I've been in their shoes of, of having to sit at the table and have those good meetings with justice and then trying to turn it into actual production of documents. And, and it's not so, it's easier said than done, I, th I think, is, is your point there, right? Well, uh, I once sat in the Capitol with Eric Holder as he told me there were only 200 and some documents and he would give us those documents in an unprecedented way if we would agree that that would end the investigation of Fast and Furious. Tens of thousands of additional documents, some of them showing his actual interference with the, uh, the discovery process and we're still not done with all of it. So it is very, very, very much a tradition at Department of Justice to come in, tell Congress what they need to hear, lie to them if necessary necessary and then uh, hope they don't get caught on their watch. Well, maybe, but there was an op-ed in the journal on Friday, maybe you saw it, about the I history did. of the FBI and the DOJ and that when, for example, Louis Free was running the FBI, Congress was respected. And when Congress came in and said, we need these documents, we want this in terms of our oversight, it was delivered. But here you have a lot of stonewalling going on. I don't think that's a, even a question anymore. You know, the, these chairmen that we're talking about, Goodlatte, Gow, uh, and Nunez have asked for specific documents a year ago, uh, 1.2 million documents to be exact. And what, what number are we up to? I mean, it was 3,000 at one 000. point. Now we're at 9,000, according to you, you and Jim Jordan. Yeah. So, well, and, and, and the best ones come last. Mm. Well, that's another thing, because so much of this is redacted, and oftentimes when we unredact the redactions, we see, well, it wasn't actually national security at all. It was something that would have been an embarrassment to the FBI. So it's hard to trust that this is actually going uh, forward in an honest way. Do you think you are getting honest answers from the FBI and the DOJ? No, I don't. I believe they're lying through their teeth. Mm -hmm. uh, look, if you want to tell the truth, you, what you do is the same thing you do in front of a federal judge, which, by the way, is another branch, just as Congress is, and you allow a full in-camera review. Uh, you know, I'm not there at the negotiating table. This is uh, now Trey Gowdy's watch. But when I was there, we would most often say, if you say it's too voluminous and you say it's going to take too long, great. We'll sit side by side with your people, we'll search, we'll look, and then we'll narrow down things we don't need. But to do that, we need to see them completely unredacted. If they want to get to the truth, that's what they do, is they make all the documents available unredacted, give our investigators who have clearances the, uh, the opportunity to sift through. But this is exactly what they didn't do in Fast and Furious. They didn't do it in the Benghazi. Uh, they didn't do it in the IRS. And it took IGs and subpoenas and FOIA and judges. Uh, and we still don't have the whole truth in each of those cases, particularly Benghazi and Fast and Furious. And, and now with the, with the investigation around the FBI's handling of the 2016 election, we're, we're circling around this so-called FBI source. Kim Strassel at The Journal wrote about this last week, and she asked, did the Bureau engage in outright spying against the 2016 Trump campaign in her op-ed? You look at the Washington Post and they know all sorts of things about this FBI source that the FBI says we can't reveal. Well, how come the Washington Post knows all the details then? They're leaking it when it works for them, but not when it doesn't. Well, this is, this is very common in Washington, is, is each side uh, has a tendency to not hold material the way they should when they need material to prove their point. And the administration, under, uh, particularly under uh, President Obama, did that regularly. They gave half stories, sometimes even giving it to Elijah Cummings and the Democrats before we even saw it on our subpoena. But, Maria, I think the important thing is it is very clear that we are being asked to trust the Department of Justice, who we know did in fact use a law that allows them to spy but lied to get the warrants lied to a, a federal judge under the fisa act so this is one of the challenges make no bones about it a fisa warrant is a is in fact a license to spy now the question is did you lie cheat or steal in order to do that and very clearly with the information presented you know, behind closed doors to the federal judge, the fact is they did mislead the judge, get a warrant, multiple, uh, you know, uh, ability to, uh, to spy, and now we're asked to believe that you can trust the very people, not 
not the management for a moment, but the very people who know this and are covering it up. Most of those people haven't retired. Some of them knew about it when they broke the law or misled a federal judge, and, uh, and they don't want us to know it. And it, it's not about Republican or Democrat. It's about the fact that we have another election coming up. Why in the world would we think it's not happening again? Right, and not only that, but we also know that they redid that FISA warrant three additional times. So four times they got the FISA warrant to spy on, on the Trump campaign, and they used it, and they got the FISA warrant by this dossier, by saying that this dossier was actually uh, some kind of important piece of work, and it was all unverified. Rod Rosenstein signed off on the fourth time when they wanted that next FISA warrant, and now Devin Nunes is saying, well, he's conflicted. He should be nowhere near any of this since he signed off on the warrant. Do you agree with that? Well, exactly. This is where uh, the attorney general, in an abundance of caution, recused himself. And now the very man he gave responsibilities to won't do the same thing when it's obvious that he has a conflict. Uh, you know, be honest, the deputy needs to recuse himself. Uh, we need to have a level of transparency, probably not one person, but multiple people who, uh, who in fact oversee this to make sure that the American people get what they deserve. Let's remember, the FBI has tremendous power and the Department of Justice handed in hand with them. And whether it was the left or the right, when they were going after Martin Luther King and bugging him and trying to uh, get, it, get dirt on him, or even all the way back with Goldwater, the FBI doesn't have clean hands. The Department of Justice says their partners don't have clean hands. And so we, as the oversight, if you will, of that branch cannot and should not trust them. We should demand the transparency that we're entitled to, and we need to be in front of a federal judge so that we have two against one because it's clear we're not getting where we need to uh, go fast enough. And, uh, you know, these chairmen are doing their job, Goodlatte, uh, Nunes, and Gowdy, but the reality is they're being slow walked. Uh, till after the election in the hopes that the Democrats will take over the House or the Senate and then the investigations will be covered up. No question in my mind uh, that, uh, that this would be something that would just go away if we lose the gavel. You're absolutely right and I think the American people are on to this at this point. We've got a forthcoming IG report out. We are expecting Michael Horowitz, the in Inspector General, to come out with his report this month. What are you expecting there and if we were to see criminal charges recommended, the way we saw that for Andrew McCabe, the number two guy at the FBI. Will we see actual accountability here? Are we going to see justice, sir? Well, I think you'll see justice. I want to lower everyone's expectations that, look, Michael Horowitz is a careful person. He's not going to ask for anything more than what he can fully prove and substantiate. So there won't be the, the, the best case. What there will be is someone who methodically goes through and takes on his bosses. You know, under Eric Holder, he testified before Congress about the way they were, in fact, covering up uh, sexual harassment and other misconduct by Department of Justice lawyers in the name of it was off limits. He came, he said it, he did not get what he wanted, but he's always been open and transparent with the, uh, the Congress when it comes to doing his job. And so he is probably the IG's IG. And if you were going to pick somebody that you weren't going to get the left or the right happy, but you were going to get the truth, it's going to be Michael Horowitz. All right. Well, we'll wait for that IG report out in the next couple of weeks. Anybody on either side of the aisle, Congressman, should be upset by oversight getting blown off. Let's face it, you're trying to get to the truth. Congressman, it's good to see you, sir. Thanks so much. See you again, Maria. Thank you so much for joining us, Daryl Issa there. President Trump accused